Good morning coaches, welcome to the new Whippy Dome. This is the home of Rugby Ontario's high performance program. Today, what we're looking at is balling contact and clear air. So this focus today, year two of our program, we're gonna to try to take it to the next level and this is gonna be the focus for our core skills session number one, which is gonna occur on December 8th at Guelph University here at the Whitby Dome in the University of Ottawa. Hope you enjoy today's work. Remember, lots of the information that we will be delivering today, you can find on the rugby site. A new partner for Rugby Ontario, some of the best players and coaches in the world delivering quality content to make our coaching and player better. Hope you enjoy it. Kalen here is going to line up, stack his joints from wrist to shoulder as well as knee to hip. He's going to have a solid grounding through his toes so that he's planted firmly through the floor. As a coach or an opposing athlete, I'm then going to come by as Kalen's pressing into the ground, creating that immobile force. He's engaging glutes and abdominal wall to make sure that he's nice and solid and I'm just testing that pillar strength, especially while attacking some of those main trauma points that a rugby player goes through when they take on contact. Excellent, so second progression, we're gonna have Kalen elevate his knees off the ground, taking on a bit more of his rugby profile. This is perfect position for say goal line defense, uh, entering the scrum, and of course, in and around the breakdown. Concept is gonna be the same, we're still going to attack those weak points and those trauma points, mainly hip and shoulder, as well as that midsection. We're gonna allow that athlete to battle through the contact that they're taking try to maintain that solid position as it's going to be the base for their platform for power and security around the breakdown. So now we're going to involve two athletes and we're going to look for an opposing force, a little bit of a contact point. So what we're going to do is we're going to line these athletes up in their pillar strength position. Typically alignment is going to go crown to crown and then the athletes will displace themselves off by two inches, okay, either to the left or to the right. This is exposing a gap Okay, and a means to create contact, as well as identifying those points, be it through the shoulder here. So the athletes are first going to engage their pillar position by raising their knees off the ground. Notice how they have a nice wide base. They still have that joint stacking. They're solid, they're strong, and they're bracing, and they're ready for that contact point. Now a coach or an opposing athlete is going to give them an engaged call. At this point, they're softly going to bind through, shoulder to shoulder, and now they're working against one another to try to displace each other. So they're gonna drive through the legs and use those contact points of support to try to displace and move that person from their position, typically battling within a meter. Now within that same progression, we're gonna look at a second technical component. That offensive rucker is still bound to that defensive rucker who's resisting maintaining that low body position and trying not to be displaced. As opposed to trying to create a fast explosive movement for mass separation. The offensive athlete is feeling the body weight of the defensive rucker and now he's gonna use a drive phase through the legs to turn those strides over to drive that defensive rucker in the direction in which he wants. Excellent, use all four pillars right now while you have them. Next progression is going to challenge the athlete a lot more by simply removing a point of contact with the ground. Okay, they still need to hold that solid position and now they need to use a little bit more of their base as well as their core strength, their pillar strength to increase the tension and that driving force into one another. So we're going to find that binding position through the athletes here. We're going to then remove the left arm and reach down to the hip. By removing that arm and placing it down on the opposition's hip, we are actually still finding a point of contact that will increase that rotary stability, as well as a safe contact point for the athlete who we're working against. Again, trying to create an environment that allows the athletes to learn and practice their positioning without causing any damage. At this point in time, we're gonna elevate the knees, we're gonna find that solid position, 
and we're going to commence that drive and resisting. So one athlete pushing, while one athlete is trying to resist that movement. So the final progression that we're going to look towards is once again removing a pillar of support. Okay, the athletes have gone through all of their progressions, they've proven mastery in those positions and are ready for the final challenge. Same layout for the athletes as far as their points of stability and their base. What the athletes are going to do now is going to reach across to the opposing shoulder, one arm at a time, tighten up, communicate, find that level of engagement. Then they're going to look for a second point of binding. What we're doing here is we're creating a little bit more distance between the athletes, higher demand on core strength as well as strength through the upper extremities. In order to get the athletes here, we need to make sure that they do have the clearance and the strength through the shoulder girdle to ensure that they can hold on as they elevate knees off ground. So we're going to find those bracing positions in that base. We're going to engage, we're going to elevate knees. We're going to keep that low hip position. Once we find our elevated uh, portion of the movement, we're then going to bend the knees and try to get them a little bit closer towards the ground in order to lower that hip profile. We want to be able to lay a nice board all the way across these bodies so that they're nice and flat as the athletes stabilize. This position is extremely challenging, therefore we don't put a lot of opposing force into each of the athletes here. If we were to go into a drive phase, the athletes would be communicated to and would simply be a six to eight inch displacement in that position. More to build upon the pillar strength in positions that do not have contact points. What we want to teach is the defender to be comfortable loading from a tall to small position. So what we've done is we've extended that torso, that truck positioning, and as Sam loads rapidly, he's gonna go back to that tabletop position so that all of the force that he produces from the hips runs in that horizontal trajectory. We want to make sure that he's comfortable, as I mentioned, running from this tall to small position in a rapid sense. Go ahead, Sam. Low drive. Excellent. So all of the energy that he's building up, again, all of the energy that he's building up as he loads into his good body position is going to result in that horizontal power and a quick expression of that. We've raised the athlete on into a half kneeling position. We're providing him with a platform for force, so energy and a platform that he can use to drive force through the floor. The offensive player is still going to work with the defensive player, giving him a leg to try to tie up and lasso. He's exposed, however, he knows he's about to take contact and we've rotated the hip so that when he's driven, he's in a safe position and he's not being toppled backwards. The defensive player is going to load his hips in the same fashion from a tall to small position. He's then going to use that front leg as a platform as we mentioned to drive force. The elbows are inside and at 90 degrees and they're looking to shoot at their point of attack. Pillar strength is extremely important as he makes that rapid shot. He needs to tense in order to drive that athlete backwards. Here we go. poacher we're gonna add a clear out so first we're gonna look at the body position of the athlete who's poaching the ball first thing they want to do is they want to hunt onto that ball they want to scan everything in and around and beyond they want to make sure that they're in a solid position so that once they get hands on they're able to brace the clear out and still maintain possession for that poach so as you can see we have the athlete with a low body position Knees are driven out wide just like his squat. That's going to allow him to lower the pelvis, lower the hips, keep a nice straight back without ending up in that hunched position, as well as a big exposed chest sitting right over top of the ball. From this position, he can tie in those lats and he can solidify himself here, making him harder to move. By providing that wide base, the athlete also has less of a target to actually wrap and secure that lasso for the clear -up. As the athlete enters the breakdown, again, he's scanning the opposition for weak points, holes in his body, areas where he can latch on, as well as areas of risk. As the athlete has his hands on the ball, he does not want to prioritize a leg that's allowing the athlete to already poach ball. 
He's now created that tall to small body position. As you see, he's got a nice level platform from shoulder to hip. Knees are close to the ground, hips are back and ready for an explosive contact. And he's identified the front leg and arm as a position that he can latch on and remove that offensive player, that defensive player from poaching the ball. So he's gonna... Get through that. Buster. Grabbing, that's 